In this video, we're going to be talking about leaders, specifically how long should a leader be for inshore saltwater fishing? We've had a lot of questions come in about this. So I have a couple examples. This is one that's kind of the shorter end that I generally do. And then here's one on the other spectrum. This is a little bit longer than normal, or at least on like the maximum end. And I have a measuring, uh, measuring tape so that we can actually measure exactly how long these are. But before we get into it, just please know that that this is, isn't like a one size fits all. A lot of this is personal preference and I'm just gonna share with you what I've seen over the years and if you have any other opinions, you know, please do leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your feedback. But as far as the, the overall pros, as far as going long, is that you know, the, the mono line is, is more abrasion resistant than braid. So technically, you know, the longer the leader is, the more abrasion resistant your, your line assembly is. And also if you are using braid, right, another benefit of having a longer leader is, is when landing fish, you can grab onto the leader without worrying about your hand getting torn up. Because if you grab on this braid and a big fish starts thrashing, you know, it could, uh, it could definitely, uh, definitely break the skin and, uh, and cause you to bleed, which is never fun. And so the third pro of a longer leader is that it, it keeps your braid, which is easier for the fish to see, it keeps your braid a little bit further away from the actual lure. So the fish will have less chance of seeing the actual braid in the water. All right, so now let's talk about the reasons why you know, a shorter leader is, is better, right? The, the benefits of not going too long is that number one, that you can cast it better. It is, it is actually bad for knots to go through guides. So if you're doing a lot of casting, highly recommend not throwing or not allowing the knots to go up into the guides because when you cast, it'll hit every single guide on the way out. And regardless of what knot you're using, that will eventually weaken the actual knot, which can cause a failure. Also, if you're using spinning tackle, it is bad for the line to be going really fast and then start hitting the rod guides and slowing it down all of a sudden. That can cause wind knots. So again, so highly recommend is, is not letting your knots go through the guides when you're doing casts. And so the shorter the leader, the easier it is to not have that knot go through the guides because as far as accuracy, it is good to have about maybe 12 inches of line hanging out of the rod tip. That, is, uh, that enables some really good accurate casts. And the further you go above that, right, the longer your leader gets and if you have to hold your leader outside of your rod tip, that's gonna be less accuracy. So you have to keep that in mind. If you're fishing in, in situations where you need accuracy, it is often better to shorten your leader so that you can, you can have your accuracy while not reeling the knots through the guides. And so another benefit of shorter leaders is, is just what fish feel, right? This goes into the, the biology of fish. You know, they feel based on their lateral lines. And so if you have a long stretch of leader, especially if you get into the thicker leaders, we'll, like we'll pull up this one, which is 30 pound test. You know, fish can actually feel this leader in many cases. So the longer your leader is, the more likely the fish will have to actually feel that there's some sort of foreign presence. And if it feels like it's long, then it could very well spook them. And the third benefit of having a shorter leader is, is just safety for other anglers in the boat. Because as more line gets out of, the, out of the rod tip when you're making a cast, that's just more room for this lure to be flying around and uh, can very well hook somebody. So uh, another benefit again of keeping the leaders at, at an appropriate length so that you maximize your results while minimizing the, uh, the bad things that could very well happen. So as far as the, the, the actual range that I use, this is, this is about the longest I use. This is generally where I start the day. So after catching some fish, you know, if, if, it's starting to get, uh, if it's starting to get rubbed down and getting weak, then I can just clip it off, retie it about an inch or two shorter, and then I can do that multiple times without having to just create a, a new leader every time. So as far as the longest one, this is basically just right, right at 26 inches. So that's, like, that's the max. And then we'll put this other one down here, and this is pretty much the min. So this is, uh, this is about 13 inches. So anywhere from 26 to 13 inches is pretty much the range that I use. And when I go small, like if I'm using a spoon, uh, a lot of times I'll go, I'll go short on that because, you know, in most cases, the fish is going to see it from a distance. It's going to come in, follow from behind, and ambush from behind. So it will not see or feel the leader as it's following it. So spoons, I go short or I keep it on the short spectrum. If I'm like finesse fishing with soft plastics, that's when I'll go a little bit longer because with a slower retrieve, the, you know, the fish have more time to kind of analyze what's going on. Um, they might be able to see this braid if it's too close. And so I, I generally keep it a little bit longer with soft plastics, a little bit shorter with spoons and topwaters and you know, things that are moving fast. 
it's just not as important to have a longer leader. And, uh, and that, again, that's just what I have have seen and experienced over the years. So if you found anything different, you know, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. And if you have questions about anything else about leaders, we have a very comprehensive article uh, about creating the best leader for inshore saltwater fishing. It covers the knots to use, the line types to use, and the right size lines based on what you're targeting. So I'll put a link down below if you're not yet there. But anyhow, just thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Hope to see you again soon. Live salt strong and wet alive.